see the back in the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. So uh, something I think has been a major focus on this channel is uh, the Jodie Whittaker era of Doctor Who, which is strange because I didn't like the Jodie Whittaker era of Doctor Who. I don't think I've been uh, uh, very coy about it, but it's more the uh, so -so sociology that surrounded it, which is really weird, right? I was there. Yeah, really, really strange sociology surrounded it. Uh, and we get to see from, you know, our little vantage here in fandom, uh, uh, a unique view of society, of Western society, and where it may have gone wrong. Uh, <laughs> where, it may, where, it, where it absolutely did go wrong. And it's really kind, kind of fascinating to look at. So this is going to be another video looking at the same thing, because it's still going on. You know, because the people who are, are very much champion the Jodie Whittaker era, uh, uh, they just can't let go. They can't move on. They can't go, ah! And the reason they can't let go, they can't move on, uh, is because they were wrong, right? And they have a lot of trouble being wrong. So what what I think we're looking at here is the uh, uh, the the only real consequence that one can expect when they uh, introduce things like participation trophies to young children, where they rob children with the ability to make mistakes and the ability to be wrong without losing any feeling of uh, um, self worth, which which is really what what it what uh, what's going down. They, their entirety of their self worth is based around always being right. And no one's always right, right? No one's always right. But their entirety of their, their self-worth is based around it. It's kind of sad, really, because you, they didn't learn these that basic life-coping skill at an early age, which is what it's there for. You know, like, why do uh, uh, why is it somewhat healthier that boys fight in school? Because they learn how to interact with their with testosterone fueled aggression, right? And so when you become uh, uh, grow up to be an adult, you know how to temper your physical strength. There's so many things that have been taken away from Western civilization, and it hasn't helped us, right? How do we know it hasn't helped us? Go look out the window, right? Go look out the window. Yeah, uh, are you going to see a, uh, a like a drag a, a drag queen uh, um, highly sexualized show for toddlers out the window? Maybe I don't. There's no idea of public decency anymore. You know, because there's no shared view of what uh, what is publicly decent. And again, I just do not feel this is for the betterment of society. So what do you do when this happens? Well, we have a bit of a laugh, really. I mean, look, hey, look, it is sad that these people just haven't developed the life skills to be able to have a a a full, well-rounded life. It is genuinely, genuinely sad. And I think we're actually watching them try to uh, uh, acquire those life skills now, even though they don't really understand. And, and yes, I understand these people have been absolutely awful, right? They've been the absolutely the worst people in the history of people. They've been very, uh, you know, the, the, in their zeal to never, ever, ever be wrong. They've been very, very bad. They've been very annoying. They've, they've, they've demonstrated just disgusting and despicable behavior. I would say somewhat relentlessly. I think, you know, spying on, you know, your contemporaries or, or other people in society for saying things that you don't like and then uh, um, putting together a mob to lambast anyone for not thinking the same as you. I just think that that, that is essentially totalitarianism. It's disgusting. Uh, uh, but again, these are literally disgusting people because we ha they've had this, the, the, the life skills to not be disgusting people completely removed from them. And yeah, there's, I, I think uh, uh, um, the throwing out of religion as well, quite frankly. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, you might know I'm not Christian, right? But I do think that the basic duty of Christian values just make life better, make society better, make make people happier, right? And more content, which is a strange thing. So I think the, all the wailing and gnashing of teeth uh, is about that. So yes, we got some more articles and people just cannot, cannot move on from Jodie Whittaker. Just can't do it. Ah, they're still in a state of existential crisis because they're wrong, right? And that's really just the bottom line, because they were wrong and they really really super duper do not like being wrong fine before we get into this article uh, a series of articles oh, I, I say our series of articles we'll see how many we 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 uh, we get through uh, uh, can i can ask you hit the like share subscribe button that's really 
all I really ask you to do. Uh, I, I asked you to do a lot more than that, actually. But like, share, subscribe. All those things are great. Especially subscribe, right? Subscribe for me. Subscribe is the one that I really like, right? I, I think YouTube likes you sharing. Uh, uh, everybody likes a bit of light, baby. Who likes to be liked? Everybody likes to be liked, even if they say they don't. Uh, they're just saying they don't because they know they're not liked, right? You know, I'm just. Yeah, I will say, you know, uh, um, it, it, it's such a common phenomenon. My 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 youngest son is uh, uh, courting a, a you know a lovely young girl, uh, uh, and, and honestly, it's. it's wonderful relationship they got right and i'm very uh when i say young girl they, they they are of marriageable age and i think there's a good chance they will actually get married but the the uh, uh his older brother just gives him crap all the time said oh look his girlfriend's got his balls uh, uh, i say to him you should be so lucky mate you should be so lucky to have a woman you know a good woman have your balls <laughs> So, uh, 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 I don't know how we got into that. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, and I hope, you know, the, uh, uh, that you all find somebody out there that, uh, 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 you know, is uh, good and proper to give your balls to. Be you, be you male or female. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, comment. Sign up my Substack, my email newsletter. Sign up my paid Substack, my paid emails new newsletter. Uh, you know... I always put out a uh, uh, an old book on uh, on my self set once a week. I should really do a review of that book. Last week was Millennial Rights, which is a really good um, six doctor and Mel great intelligence story set around Y two K. It was it was excellent, written by uh, Craig Hinton. Honestly, I wish they'd be able to put those books out again. Right? It's, it seems so sad that they. Uh, uh, they're just lost to the the sands of time. I think BBC Books have uh, published a few. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very, very good. Uh, Substack, Instagram, Twitter, all those things. Yes, I would like to do all those things. Uh, uh, what would I like Bleeding Cool to do? Stop. Just stop, okay? Just stop. Bleeding Cool. Uh, I, I'm not, not, not one of my favourite websites in the world. Uh, essentially because they are uh, disgusting propagandists for the people who who just can't be wrong, right? Cannot be wrong. Uh, uh, and so we're going to start off with them going, Doctor Who, one last look at the 13th Doctor Final Adventures. Thank God it's one last look. And I, I say this many times, I think her last adventures were her best. Were they good? No! They weren't good, right? Don't confuse the two, right? They, they, yes, they were her best, but they were not, were not good. Why weren't they good? Well, they had Jodie Whittaker in them. That's one thing. Uh, they were written by Chris Chibnall. That's another thing. Uh, uh, um, but, you know, the production values were, were, uh, were, were quite good on a lot of them. Uh, this is it. The last Doctor Who post of the year and possibly the last Doctor Who compilation video of the year. Oh, this was from, oh, well, from uh, December 31st. And uh, it's just, uh, just, uh, it, and it just must be another look at the Thirteenth Doctor Final Adventures. Why? Oh, I say so. BBC's put out a compilation of them. Why again? Why? Nobody wants to remember this shit. Okay, it, it, it this hurt. I mean, honestly, honestly, it's, it's, it's like if you have like a history of Germany and they, and they go through the, uh, the Third Reich years and go, oh yeah. Oh, we love that. Let's talk about that a bit. Well, no, they don't like you talking about that at all. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's fine. I, when, when I was in rabbinical seminary in my, in my uh, uh, youth, uh, um, I lived in the, uh, uh, it was in the old city of, of, of uh, Jerusalem, which is like, yeah, the, 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 the bit of Jerusalem that dates back thousands of years. Uh, the, 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 the Jewish the Jewish quarter of it was rebuilt in because it was all blown up in the 60s uh, uh, the 40s I should say uh, in 1948 by the uh, uh, Arabs <laughs> uh, uh, after Israel uh, Israel's war of independence so all that bit's really quite reasonably quite new but you always got lots of German tour groups coming through right all these uh, 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 it was really weird like why would they want to come and see the Jews because I always wanted to go up to them and go we survived <laughs> But, you know, I thought that would you know, probably be a bad idea. Although, okay, this is a true story. And normally when I say true story, it's not. But this one actually really is, okay? Uh, um, you were, uh, uh, when was this? This was on Sabbath, must be in mid-90s, right? Okay, that's how long ago it was. Um, I was in a synagogue in the old city of Jerusalem called the Rumbun Synagogue. It was, uh, no, the Horva Synagogue, I, I, I lie, right? But the... Uh, 
it, it's, re, it's been rebuilt since then because it was blown up in the 19, uh, 1948 by the Arabs. Uh, uh, but it was like, it was a smaller, uh, 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 you know, affair back then. But anyway, uh, it was Sabbath and it was the afternoon services where, where um, whatever, it does, doesn't matter, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm in there, I'm in the prayer services, I'm at the back and this German tour group wants to come in, right? And they, the first person they come to is me. He says, "Can we come in to the Orthodox synagogue?" And this is really how it sounded. <laughs> I'm lying. So uh, I said, "Look, no, we're in the middle of services right now. Can you come back?" He says, "So the guy." And this, this really happened. Okay, this really happened. He says, "But we want to see the Orthodox Jewish synagogue." So I look at him, and without a beat, he said, "Well, he shouldn't have burned them all down in 1937, should you?" <laughs> Didn't go down well. Didn't go down well. <laughs> they left. Suffice to say. They left. And, and I had caused an international incident again. <laughs> Boy, this is it, the last Doctor Who post of the year, and possibly the last Doctor Who compilation video of the year, probably. And it's just another look at the 13th Doctor's final adventure. That's Flux, uh, that season that nearly tanked the show, yes. Uh, let's pick that scab again. Yeah, they, they're they also down on this, right? And, and frankly, uh, uh, it was the best thing they did, but I think they're, this means they get, they've moved on from denial. they moved on from bargaining, and finally... Finally, we're, we're rounding the corner to acceptance. Oh, happy day, happy day, because that means they might shut up. I mean, look, listen, look, you've got the new Rossi Davis Doctor coming. It's going to be good. We can all like that. Just shut up about your idiot Whitaker. God, she was so awful, right? I'm sorry she was awful. I'm sorry it was shit. I'm sorry it did very badly, right? I'm sorry for all those things. But all those things also happened, right? All those things also really genuinely went down. Um, fine, so let's see what they had. Flux has some decent ideas buried under reams of boring uh, uh, exposition dialogue. Uh, yeah, okay. Why are you saying this like you're surprised? Have you? Did you not see seasons 11 and 12? Right? I, I, I guess the only real difference is they didn't have good ideas in season 11 and 12. They just had the boring exposition dialogue. The scripts were pretty much first drafts. It's a, all of Chibnall's scripts were just first drafts. I mean, he's just not very good at his job. I mean, how do you know he's not a very good job? That's who he casts as Doctor Who, right? And that's what she thinks is a good acting choice for Doctor Who. I mean, honestly... I will be more likely to get in a van with the windows blacked out with a man saying, would you like to some candy and to see my puppies in my van? And then get in the TARDIS with that, baby. It's, yeah, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, there was a Saturday Night Live sketch once where they had uh, this guy come in to, uh, uh, to do like, you know, crime prevention to a school and say, yeah, if, if anybody with a, a van full of, uh, uh, you know, candy or pop is you getting, you shouldn't. And the kids are like, wait a minute, you're telling me there are random strangers around it, r roving around with vans full of puppies and candy, right? You say, yes, that's what I'm saying. So, well, the answer is simple. Get in that van. And they're like, no. <laughs> that, that became a thing in my family. Like, get in that van. <laughs> um, uh, the scripts are pretty much uh, first drafts. For most screenwriters, first drafts are known as vomit drafts, usually overwritten, too much on the nose dialogue. Notes and rewrites will have uh, refined the, those scripts where dialogue would have been edited down uh, and the story made more visual, the characters more active, rather than standing around explaining the plot to one another. How did that not happen with Chris Chibnall's Doctor Who, right? How, I mean, like, how did that not happen? It's That seems like a reasonable question to me, right? I mean, how is that not a reasonable question? How did that not happen in this Doctor Who? It's, that's just basically how you make TV shows, right? It's really weird. What did I hear about? Uh, oh, yeah. What is something really strange? Uh, Red Letter Media has quite a good review of... Um, what was it? Uh, uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. I love that movie. Very, very good movie. But a weird thing about it is when people talk, oftentimes their lips just no way sync up to the dialogue. So apparently how they used to make these movies, these uh, spaghetti westerns, 
is everybody who's just used to talk in their own language. If, you, if you're an English actor, you'll speak in English. If you're Spanish, you'll speak Spanish. If you're Italian, you'll speak Italian. And they'll just all dub, dub it at the end, right? After, after the fact. Isn't that weird, right? <laughs> That's strange. Another thing is, if you ever seen The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, there's these weird uh, uh, sequences where there's just a lot of music and people r r riding along on a, on, on a horse, not doing much, right? Apparently it's because, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy, the director, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sergio Leone. Just really like the music. Like the 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 music was um, written before the movie. Again, a weird spaghetti western thing they did, and they uh, um, and he just liked it, so he could extend the sequences. Anyway, I digress. Still, would have been much better than Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who. Um, they didn't. Uh, that didn't seem to happen with Flux or seasons eleven and twelve. They were just dire. Right? Really? Have you seen uh, uh, what's the uh, Rosa? That's clearly a first draft, right? And a poor first draft at that, all right? Uh, um, that didn't happen with Fox, with a near uh, uh, endless stream of mediocrity, the villain spouting gobbledygook you know, internally. Again, I, I'm being honest with it and saying it's better than everything they did before. Uh, things because uh, uh, things because. Things because, just because, I think things happen, I mean, uh, uh, Chibnall even succeeded in making the Weeping Angels dull and not scary. Good cliffhanger, though, right? Uh, uh, even the Daleks was uh, an otherwise generic Dalek story with, ground, uh, with Groundhog Day slapped over it. Uh, uh, but deeply messed up uh, when the guy who uh, was an utter creeper with mental problems. Uh, yeah, Angie Salmon, uh, win the love of the girl who's been stalking, Irish good morning, everything B. Yeah, I, again, they, again it, it's because Chris Chibnall doesn't know how to be a human being, right? They say uh, uh, social justice warriors don't human being very well. That's very true. That's very true, as we've seen. Um, Legend of the Sea Devils took real-life 19th century Chinese pirate queen uh, one of the most fascinating people in history and made her utterly boring. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, um, but again, look, this, uh, why would you expect any different? Right? I don't understand. Why would you expect any different? I'm like, what? Well, do you expect a politician to start sp telling the truth to you? Why? And like, I, I don't understand why people are always surprised when politicians are caught lying. They're like, yes, they're politicians. They lie. They are liars. That's what their job is. Um, so clearly, uh, Chibnall clearly rela uh, related to Dan most of all because he could write for, uh, him uh, uh, melancholy and soulful, uh, you know, effortlessly while uh, he is distrained to give the Doctor any pathos. Well, okay. Because he doesn't know how to write, how to write essentially, and he set himself a task he couldn't get over. Right? He, uh, look, basically, it's like this: if you're uh, white and straight and working in the entertainment industry, you've got to be super duper, uh, uh, you know, inject uh, um, identity politics. You, you know, you've got to you've got to really raise up gay people, uh, trans people, women. Uh, in, in you know in your scripts, otherwise uh, uh, you can't get over the the you know inherent white maleness that that Chris Chibnall has. Uh, uh, oh, maybe we could just look as pe at people as people, right? Maybe that I don't know. Uh, he could write. Uh, 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 Criminal struggles to give Yaz Mandan any personality at all. Well, in all fairness, I don't think Manda Gill... I think it's probably hard to give Manda Gill any personality at all. She doesn't strike me as Little Miss personality, does she? No. I, I, it's just I don't think she's very clever. It's the bottom line. I just don't think she's very clever. I don't think Whitaker's very clever. I, I, and I think people like Tom Baker probably are very, very clever. Have Clearly have a clever, inventive, different mind, right? Uh, um... Well, is it uh, any person at all? And found some definition with the character by having a fall in love with the Doctor. That wasn't even his idea. Jodie Whittaker saw Phasmin memes on social media and suggested they put their uh, their romance into the show. Well, at least that's what they said. Jodie Whittaker had some creative ideas for her Doctor. Uh, for her Doctor, had more creative ideas for her Doctor than uh, Chibnall did. I mean, yeah, to walk around and make her into a buffoon. Uh, yeah, that is a creative idea. Is that a good creative idea? 
I'm going to go out on the limb and say no. I will call that what yeah, what we say in the technically in the industry is a bad creative idea. You know, they're the only type of creative ideas, for example, Ryan Johnson used in The Last Jedi. Bad creative ideas, not good creative ideas. So, you know, I think it's worth differentiating between the two. Don't you? No, don't you think that's somewhat important? No, I don't think they do. Uh, Chibnall was a democratic leader, often asking a cast what they want to do on the show and doing his best to accommodate them. Yeah, look, the, the weak leaders uh, uh, just try and get, make everybody happy, right? Rather than having a vision and lead people to that vision, he just seemed to want to make people happy, right? His vision was to make Doctor Who as uh, woke, for, and which means platforming of ideology as humanly possible, right? That was his one idea and it wasn't a very strong one really all things considered uh yeah comedy then the one reason they liked him so much and, rem and remained loyal to him yeah, yeah i guess so. i mean like they're not i mean how loyal yes i think i think they remain pretty loyal right other than the actual management of the bbc who has clearly thrown him under the bus i um although i think yeah i I'm, i am glad he managed to get another job i think it'll be crushingly unfair if the BBC never gave him any more work after he, like, really carried the water for them. The 13th Doctor was asexual by accident or default? A bit of both, really. The, the default was accident. LG, uh, LGBTQ fans were disappointed by the uh, timidity of the Thasmin love story. Yes! Yeah, I mean, like, again, no real creative vision. That's very true. They didn't even kiss. It was too little, too late. I mean, they, they had... Uh, uh, Yaz carrying the unconscious doctor just before she died. God, I hated that. Ah, oh, so gross. Um, uh, where was it? Take on, uh, too late. But what if there was another take on this? You could read their love story as an asexual romance. There is, okay, no, no, I'm sorry, mate. Uh, uh I understand that asexual people have rebranded themselves as ace. No, it's like, uh, you're, you're, uh, if you're blind, your uh, your your eyesight is as healthy as if you're asexual, uh, uh, and uh, your your eyesight is as healthy as your sex life if you're asexual, right? Uh, uh, it, it, it this is a uh, it strikes me that um, with most people, with it's a mental illness more than anything else that's going to severely debilitate your life, right? Being ace is the most misunderstood of the LGBTQ spectrum. I think it mostly is you're too scared to put yourself out there to start a relationship with somebody, somebody of the sex who you, 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 you desire, right? That you're, you're scared to get rejected, right? I think that's what most ace people are. Um, with doing very little research on it whatsoever. If you're ace, by the way, come on my channel. I'll be fascinated to talk to you about it. I, um, you know, not, knowledge is power. Right, but I do get that feeling that it's m mostly fear, right? Uh, which is, you know, this doctor was wasn't brave. She was very, very, very fearful. Um, where are we up to? Uh, where one is interested? Uh, was it uh, being asymmetric? Where one is interested in emotional and romantic intimacy, but has no sexual interest in the one they love? Well, that that's called that. Yeah, that's called being ill. Right? No, you, we are we, human beings are not wired that way. And if you are wired that way, uh, you, you want to try and get that fixed, right? Just the same way. You, you're supposed to be able to see with your eyes, right? It's not, that's very important, right? That's a, kind of like one of the major parts of that. Uh, where the previous male doctors were presented as flirtatious and sexy men. David Tennant was. I don't think Matt Smith was flirtatious at all. I think his lack of understanding of sex, I think, was uh, uh, quite, quite, quite refreshing and innocent. Uh, nothing about the Thirteenth Doctor. Uh, uh, what was it? Um, where the uh, lacking any sexual uh, or uh, energy or spark. Uh, Chimel declared that the Doctor was non-binary. She wore a, a rainbow on her shirt. Nothing about. The 13th Doctor was created by accident. Yeah, yeah no. It, I remember when it, when it first came out, people were like, well, maybe they're trying to be like Colin Baker. You know, let's, and they're trying to be like really nice about it. But no, that obviously wasn't the case, was it? No. Um, 
all the uh, uh, all this is speculation, of course. It's possible that uh, Chibnall made his run of Doctor Who as inoffensive as possible because there was pressure to do so. The BBS, the BBC is under right wing leadership. Will you fuck off? No, it's not. It's under extreme left wing weirdos. Excuse me. While you have departments for diversity and inclusion, that's extreme left wing weirdos. It's not under a right wing uh, leadership at all. Uh, look, really, would a right wing leadership produce that the the, the the shit that the BBC vomits out regularly? What delude like what deluded fucks are you? Uh, uh, and the show sold to many countries where LGBTQ uh, representation uh, would have gotten it bad. Oh, you mean like Disney, like, like places that have Disney Plus? Really? Uh, um, okay. Uh, uh, where are we up to? Uh, as it is, the one who understood the Doctor, uh, who the Doctor has been, what understood the Doctor has been Jodie Whittaker, but didn't go to uh, what? As it is, the one who best understood the Doctor uh, has been Jodie Whittaker, but did she didn't write any uh, write of her scripts? Okay, that performance was epically awful, right? I don't know what you're smoking, but wish I had some, mate. Um, Juno Dawson's audio drama, Doctor Redacted, which was vapid narcissist porn. It was awful. It, it was, I, mean, like, I listened to the first couple of episodes because when I when I were when I would uh, review it, I kept getting copyright strikes so, or, or you know community strikes because I said it was very bad. Uh, yeah, they do not like anybody uh, uh, commenting on it. And I, I'm sorry, the vapid narcissists that you presented as your regular trans friends. I mean, like they've seemed like the worst people in the world. I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, Redacted played the Doctor more than the uh, um, the TV series ever did, including moments where the trans heroine played by Charlie Craggs discovers the Doctor used to be a man and feels a kinship with her. Okay, uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor remains uh, unfulfilled potential and probably is going to take some big Finnish audio dramas uh, in the future to do more uh, creative and adventurous uh, writers to bring that out. I, I, I don't think it's happening, right? There was a rumour that they, somebody asked her about doing Big Finish, and she's like, nah, I don't want to bother with that. I don't think she's interested, frankly, right? Uh, I, I mean, look, she must know how badly it's gone down, right? I mean, she must know how badly it's gone down, no? Maybe not, maybe not. For now, we'll leave you with Sigur uh, Sigurd Anacola's underrated theme for the third, 13th Doctor. He's never been, I have never seen him underrated in anything, right? His theme is, um, uh, yeah, I've never seen him underrated in anything at all. I, 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 if he wasn't black, he wouldn't have got that job, frankly. I, I, it, he just seemed to do really, really tepid, uninteresting work for Doctor Who. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah, again, it's just like, again, this was a, just a tantruming article. Uh, uh, say no! I understand. I understand. So let's continue that theme with this article over here. Tantruming and saying no. Uh, Chibnall broke a big Doctor Who tradition, and it hurt uh, hurt Whitaker's era. Yes, it did. Every creative decision done by uh, Chris Chibnall hurt the Whitaker era. I agree with you there. Every creative decision by the Whitaker era uh, uh, by. Uh, uh, the, this production hurt the Whitaker era. That's a hundred percent correct, right? That is absolutely a hundred percent correct. Uh, uh, Pfizer, they must be talking about Christmas. That 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 would be my uh, 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 my guess, right? Because they got a Christmas tree, you know, in, in, in the main picture. That's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? That 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 is a little bit bit of a giveaway. Um, where are we up to? Fine. Jodie Whittaker had one of the most divisive runs uh, uh, as Doctor Who's titular hero, which wasn't helped by Chris Chibnall breaking uh, uh, a years old tradition. It was dumb, right? Again, everything he did was dumb. But breaking one of most, uh, by breaking one of Doctor Who's most beloved traditions, and it was only since two thousand six, uh, uh, Chibnall hurt the Whittaker era of Doctor Who as the thirteenth Doctor even more. Chibnall and Whitaker joined the long-running BBC series after the previous showrunners, uh, Moffat and Twelfth Doctor, 
Uh, Capaldi both left the show. Well, one was kicked off, I think. Uh, what did Capaldi the 13th Doctor from uh, 2018 to 2022 Regeneration in a Centenary Special? The Power of the Doctor! We never found out what that was. Uh, uh, which sort of tra transformed back into David Tennant's 14th Doctor despite a long run on the series. Whitaker was highly divisive amongst Die Hard fans. Man, guess everybody! Everybody hated her. She was very bad at her job, right? Everybody hated her because, again, she was just useless. I, I, I want to tell you. I, I mean, like, look, here, where's the uh, uh, the ratings? Let me pull that up. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, I think this is it, isn't it? Open with Google Chrome. Ah, wrong one over here. Uh, whoa, that, oh, that was just the specials, wrong one, hang on. Uh, uh, yeah, see, it looks a little bit worse when you see it, see it from the first one. Uh, doink, is this it? Open with... Up oh, there you go, yeah! Right, so this is the normie reaction to it, right? You see, like, this is not... Uh, uh, this is nothing to do with the fans, right? This is the normie reaction. It just didn't resonate with people because it, it they couldn't recognize what, what species this was supposed to be, right? Uh, Dr. Spike Longer, uh, uh, the Whitaker's era was highly divisive amongst hardcore diehard fans. With many feeling the show's writing and trademark uh, intricate nativity was seriously lacking. Well, the writing seriously was, that's true. Since the 2005 re uh, revival, one of the staples has been the annual slate of Doctor Who Christmas specials. I really watched, I think I watched all of them this year. And they're very different beasts, right, from the uh, uh, regular Doctor Who. Uh, Standalone episodes that feature the Doctor and, the, and their companions, occasionally, or you have uh, one-off companions. Every incarnation except for Christopher Eccles and Night Doctor got, got to play in the sandbox. Well, we got... Uh, um, What's it called again? Uh, the Unquiet Dead. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, in the sandbox, the Christmas specials, the tick -tick, but Chibnall never uh, was gifted a, a Whitaker a holiday episode. That's not true. Evil the Daleks was a Christmas holiday episode, right? It was meant to try and reclaim the Christmas spot, but it wasn't good enough. The BBC hated his Doctor Who. They were embarrassed by his Doctor Who, quite understandably, quite frankly. Um, where was it? Uh, Chibnall may have damaged Whitaker's ear, especially since he would have been uh, the perfect. Uh, she would have been the perfect fit for a Christmas special. How would you work that out? What? What? I mean, it was it. Look, he had too much arrogance coming in, too much belief in his meager abilities coming in. Right? If they, like, oh no, we don't do Christmas specials. They're boring. We're going to do New Year's Day specials. Fuck off. What the hell? No. New Year's Day is a month, but the reason they stopped the Christmas specials is because it's Christmas, which is a biblical holiday, a Judeo-Christian biblical holiday, and they hated it. It's, it's a symbol of the white male patriarchy, and they hated it, right? They absolutely hate it, which, by the way, is another reason why I'm optimistic about Russell C. Davis, right? I think somebody who likes Christmas uh, is probably going to... It's probably a good bloke, right? That's what I think. It's probably a good bloke. So here's, here's Rusty Davis and what he feels about Christmas. Yes, right? I talked about this yesterday. Uh, um, this really gives me a lot of hope that he's in a normal house uh, surrounded by family, right? You do not see that in the weird Hollywood perverts, right? You do not see that at all. Uh, well, we, uh, the, the, um, previous Doctor Who producers, Rusty Davis, Stephen Moffat, revealed they struggled to find ideas for Christmas specials. I remember when Chimmel said, oh, I can't think of it, that, like, the, on my YouTube channel, on Noel's channel, uh, we, we got hundreds of ideas. Hundreds of Christmas ideas. It's not hard. Oh, uh, I mean, you yeah, know, no harder than writing Doctor Who in general. The episodes need to be distanced from the main story, uh, uh, the main series, while also pushing the story along, creating a bridge between uh, one season and the next. I mean, honestly, Power of the Doctor would have been a good Christmas special. It was very fr uh, uh, frothy, very loud. Normies don't understand Doctor Who anyway. They don't understand when the acting's bad or not. They don't. They don't know the difference. They just know they don't get it. Right? They're like, eh, but they did, also didn't understand. They didn't like Jodie Whittaker. They just know they didn't like it. Right? Um, 
So uh, while also pushing the story ahead, creating a bridge between one season and next, while their struggle to what was evident in some of the Christmas specials, most of them provide, uh, provide holiday joy. But Chibnall never seemed to take the idea of a Christmas-centered episode. Again, even the Daleks was a Christmas episode, so shut up. Uh, even called a problem at the beginning of this time, while refusing the 2017 Christmas special twice upon a time, forcing Ma uh, Moffat to delay the Capaldi re uh, regeneration into Whittaker. But I love twice upon a time. Oh, Jody Whittaker would have been the perfect, uh, would have been perfect for Christmas special. Why? Do you hate Christmas? I, I don't understand. Frankly, it's a shame that Jodie Whittaker never got to play the Doctor during a Christmas special. Again, even the Daleks was a Christmas special, right? Since the uh, Whittaker's run, the Doctor's uh, 30th Doctor perhaps most know, uh, is the most Christmassy Doctor ever. You do not understand Doctor Who, Jodie Whittaker, or Christmas. Uh, if, to make that statement, right? That's the only way you can pull all the threads of uh, 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 your ridiculous, moron, but moronic idea together. You do not understand Christmas, Doctor Who, or indeed Jodie Whittaker. Uh, where was it? Uh, good. Not least for the fact that her encounter was actually born on Christmas Day at the end of Twice Upon a Time and then vomited out the TARDIS, which I think is right and proper, don't you? I think you do. I think you agree. Uh, Whitaker's uh, characterization of Doctor was always upbeat. Yes, but in kind of like, you know, a brain damaged way. Like, hey, you the boy! I mean, she was always like this, like, smiling idiot child, except when she was like a sad girl who'd lost her dolly, right? Ooh. So sad. I mean, that was basically her, all right? She had a, a, a very, very shallow performance. Because uh, I don't think she could understand the bloody role. Bottom line, uh, was always upbeat, playful, and family orientated. No! All right, qualities that epitomize Christmas. While well, she brought these joyful traits to every episode she took part in, every episode she took part in was miserable, right? Uh, uh, the, why wasn't she on screen much for twice upon a time? Uh, not twice upon a time, for the power of the Doctor, because she is one of the weakest links for their Doctor Who. Her, her portrayal is frankly shocking. And again, again, just look at the bloody ratings, you moron, right? Just look at the... Which one is it? It's over here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Just look, I mean, like, that shows a very bad central performance, amongst other things, right? Yeah, it's shockingly bad. Um... Where are we up to? Uh, while she brought these joyful traits to everybody, no, it would have been fantastic to see a Christmas themed story. Again, they didn't want to do a Christmas themed story because they are bigots. That's <laughs> so, bottom line. They hate white male patriarchy and they see Christmas as an expression of that because they're morons, right? Because they are stupid. Well, Excellent missed out too. And now he also had uh, uh, Unquiet Dead. Tenet had five uh, uh, five Christmas specials. Yeah, five. He had, uh, let me get one second. We had uh, Christmas Invasion, Runaway Bride, um... Then the next Doctor, uh, uh, well, end of time one and two. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit weak, but okay. Uh, and Matt Smith had got four, uh, four during, during their ten years. Um, but the Capaldi ones are a lot better than you remember, right? Uh, so it seems ridiculous that Whitaker would miss out on having, despite five years uh, with uh, as the Doctor on the belt again. You were all saying this was the greatest thing ever back in 27, 2018. Like, well, no, we should have New Year's special, Christmas special. No, no, old man bad, old man bad. Don't you remember? You're all behind it, you dumb cunts. I mean, really? Uh, blah, blah, yeah, so where we at? Five years. Uh, uh, but instead, uh, Chinmore landed Whitaker with the unfestive January episode. Uh, most, mostly stories involving Daleks that um, completely negated Christmas cheer that the audience longed for at the end of the main season. Was Revol Revolution of the Dalek? Oh, I can't believe she got that wrong, right? On, on an on a interview with James Corden, the biggest pussy in the history of pussies, right? Uh, uh, I can't... Uh, do you want to give the uh, give the revelation of the, of the title of the Christmas special, the New Year's special? She said, ah, Revolution of the Dalek. I mean, how do you fuck that up? I don't understand how you fuck that up. It's, it's beyond me, right? It's out of the But wasn't that a bit Christmassy? 
I remember that being a bit Christmassy, wasn't it? I sort of recall they're having some like some tinsel in that. Um, where is it? Uh, uh, long for the end of the uh, at the end of the main season. Nobody was watching the main season. For God's sake! I mean, Ken. There! Look, remember? No one's watching the main season, you morons. Uh, um, Whitaker finally regenerated in October 2022, only about five years too late, meaning she will never be the main Doctor during a Christmas special. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'll say one more. She will never was the Doctor. <laughs> okay! Oh, I think that big retcon pen is coming, baby. I think that bit, big retcon pen, and they're going to be found out where you've been in the land of fiction or somewhere all this time. And this uh, Doctor is irrelevant, and you can completely sidestep them. Uh, uh, I think it's right and proper. Uh, but hopefully Davis will bring back the much-loved tradition. He's already announced it, you idiot. We got one in 2023 and 2024, right? Uh, what? Uh, when full season Doctor return in, uh, when was this? When was they? This this came out recently, three days ago. Okay, he announced in Doctor Who magazine a month ago. The new issue's coming out on Thursday, right? If this video has been posted on Wednesday, when I think it is, uh, uh, then the next one's the next issue is coming out literally tomorrow, right? And you're just catching up to this, really? Bloody hell! Bloody hell. Uh, um, tell you, with cutting edge journalism like this, it's amazing that, uh, uh, you know, this era failed. That, you know, they didn't have the journalistic integrity to, to, to improve the season, uh, and, you know, and improve the era. It, it, it's unbelievable. I, I, I just, I, how are you so dumb? It's beyond me. It's really genuinely beyond me how you know so little about Doctor Who, what you talk about with so much confidence. It's just one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Uh, 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 not quite as strange as Jodie Whittaker's Doctor Who, but, not, but also, uh, that was just depressing, all things considered. I think that was just depressing. My name's Leela Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>